family because my mother was Catholic and she made a deal with my dad who grew up Southern Baptist that he would just not really, either he was going to convert or he just wouldn't cause any issues with the whole Catholic thing. So my dad learned how to home church, which just meant football. <laughs> and, uh, but he finally took me back to the church that he grew up in. He grew up in one of those one room schoolhouse kind of churches where everybody knew everybody. He grew up in, uh, my mom grew up in Baltimore. My dad grew up in the Eastern Shore and, um, and a real farming town. And, and so he went to this little church where everybody had been given like at six or seven years old their own, their own Bible with their name embossed in it. And uh, so he was showing me his Bible. And, you know, I grew up in the Catholic Church where we don't really read the thing. We just have it read to us when we're sleeping in church. And we don't know it. And my dad's one of those guys who, like, memorized the Bible and went to Bible camp. And when he showed me his Bible, I was like, wow, that's really cool. Like, half of it's in red. I don't get it. And he was just like, oh, God, Amy. It's so embarrassing. Because when Jesus talks, it's in red. I don't know. Anybody else here Catholic can feel my pain? Okay, good. I was so thrilled to move to Nashville, Tennessee almost 10 years ago. The first thing I wanted to do was go to one of those big, huge gospel churches with people that wear like, you know, the, the Madonna headset, you know, and run around and like proselytize. I'd never seen anything like that except on TV that my mother would, would quickly turn off. And, um, you mean like the Madonna, like Madonna the pop star, or Madonna yes. like... Oh, not Madonna. No, no, that's I, like my, I, that's, I was like, I don't no, know that headset, that no, Madonna. Like, you know, like the microphone. Oh, oh like Express Yourself. Like Express oh, Yourself era. Just but wanted to make sure. sure. Like with Jesus, you know? Yes. Yes. Like anybody. So I went to... So I went through this very awkward dating phase. You know, dating in your 40s is weird. It's really freaking weird. I was like not going to do Match.com. You know, it was just not going to happen. And I was like, no, I'm going to meet a nice... Well, I don't want to I don't want to date another songwriter because that's just, you know, another one of me. Two of us in the house. Oh, God, please just show me, like, give me a Vanderbilt professor of history or literature or something like that. But, you know, I, I went on a couple dates with another songwriter, and he was lovely. Um, and one of the first dates he took me on, he took me to one of those, he was like, you know, and I'm not really a church person, because most of us, when we hit our 30s or 20s or 18, and leave home after Catholic upbringing, we go, why are we doing this? Like, why do I have to get up every day? No. And so I kind of was like, I, I'm a little bit too chicken shit to be an atheist because I'm terrified. So I, I was like one of those Buddhist agnostic people. You know, like I took a couple classes in Buddhism and I meditate and so I'm like, that sounds good. Um, so I meet this lovely man and we have this whole, he's a, he's a prayer person, I'm a meditation person. I'm like, this will work, we can try. He's like, well, I go to this church, do you wanna come to church with me? And I'm open-minded and I was like, yeah, that's, I'd love to see that. And then he took me to a church, like I hope I don't offend any of you, but it's like, basically it's in a football stadium in Nashville and there's, can't, it's like a TED talk. You know, there's like, there's like screen, TV screens everywhere. And then the band is like, I mean, like there's a stage and we're all standing around and I'm like, okay, I mean, and I'm like, I've got this inner dialogue, stay open-minded, stay open-minded, stay open-minded, stay open-minded. And the band is like underneath the stage, like at a platform, and it starts to raise, right? And then the band raises, and then the dry smoke starts, and then the light show starts, and it's like, Jesus, I love you, and it's like pop rock Jesus song. And, and I was like, okay, stay, stay open, stay open. And everybody's got their hands in the air, and they're like, totally rocking out to the worst music I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, stay open, stay open, stay open. And I and the guy that I'm with, who's really hot, and he's a great guitar player, and he's a really great sing singer and songwriter, but he's got his hands in the air, and he's totally doing that, and I'm thinking, this is never gonna work. <laughs> and then, like, there's a whole other part of the stage where, like, at the middle of the, and then, like, the preacher comes out and he's got, like, bleach blonde hair that's like this, and he's tattooed, and he's got, you know, nose ring, and he's got the Madonna headset, and he's running around, and he's talking about Jesus, and I'm like, wow, this is so different than the Catholic Church. <laughs> we are not in Kansas anymore, you know? And I'm like, so I'm starting to get into this, kind of like, wow, I'm like, a, I'm in a monster truck and tractor pull, is what in my head. <laughs> I'm in a 
different culture. It's this, I'm in the South. This is cool. And then from behind, and he's like, and if you feel the spirit, who feels the spirit? And I'm just standing there like, and like in those kind of moments where people are yelling about feeling the spirit, I'm terrified that because I'm Catholic and I spent my entire like teenage years fearing the call, you know, like to be a nun, I was like, oh my God, no, I'm not going to feel the spirit. No, please not me, please not me. And there's like a thousand people in the stadium. And I'm terrified the spotlight is running around because the spotlight is looking for somebody who's feeling the spirit. And I'm like, stand still, stand still, stand still. And from behind the band that's like rocking out comes a hot tub that's steaming. And there's like a big spotlight on the hot tub. And I'm like, what's going on? If you feel the spirit, you can be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like literally something came up inside me that was like, and I was like, oh God. And the guy, thank God, this is the only redeeming quality of this whole date that happened, is he grabbed my hand and he said, don't move. <laughs> Just don't move. <laughs> Don't do it. Because I was like, oh. <laughs> no. So I was not baptized in the big church of football, Ted Talkers, that day. But I did experience something I'd never, just letting you know. Does anybody, did I offend anybody? Are you still with me? I haven't even gotten to politics yet, but that's. No. <laughs> it's safer these days to talk about religion. <laughs> we can at least still, we can all, at least we're we're still laughing about that, you know. I mean, laughter is gonna save us. I swear, it's the comedians are gonna get us through this time. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get baptized that day. I was baptized like five days after I was born. I think that no matter if I decide I'm a Buddhist or an atheist or an agnostic, I was told that that that'll hold me. So, you know. Song has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> I told you it's an acid trip in my head tonight. <laughs> to the sea, to the shore, when the even tide came in. I am here to tell you tales of where I've been. In the shells, I whispered my love songs and secret rhymes. Left them at your door 